This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. You can download this project from the link in the description. So let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I am calling it an elegant logo reveal. As always, I'm using the 1920 by 1080 resolution at 30 frames per second and my duration is 10 seconds longer. The first step is to create a reflection layer. So go to the tools and select the rectangle tool. Please note, my fill is set to a white color and my stroke is set to none. Now randomly create some rectangles like this. These shapes can be different, because we will use them as the reflection only. And this is how it looks. Now rename this layer as the reflection, and then make a duplicate of it. Select the bottom layer, then go to the tools, and search for the fast box blur. Apply it onto the layer, and then change the blur radius value to a higher number, so that the black background won't be visible. Now select both layers, right click on it, and choose pre-compose. I am calling it reflection, and then hit OK. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the polar coordinates. Apply it onto the layer, and then make sure to keep the type of conversion from polar to the rectangle. Now change the interpolation value to 40%. Again, go to the effects and the presets, and search for the motion tiles. Apply it right below the polar coordinates. Make sure you are at the first frame, and then add a keyframe on the tile center. Then go to the 10 second position, and change the first position value to a higher number. I am keeping a value of 2500. As you can see, we can see some sharp edges on this reflection map. So make sure to check this mirror edge option, and it will fix this problem. Check the animation, and this is how it looks. Let's move to the next step. Import your logo into the project, and then adjust the scale value of it. I'm keeping this size. Then right click on it, and choose pre-compose. Let's call it logo comp, and then select move all attributes into the new composition. Now select this reflection comp, and we will use the track mat for it. If your track mat tab is not available here, then right click on it, go to the columns, and choose modes, as well as switches, because we are going to use them. Now I don't need this parent option, so I'm going to hide it. Now change the track mat to the alpha mat, and this is how the reflection layer will look now. I can see some sharp edges around the shape, so open this composition, select the top layer, then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fast box blur. Apply it onto the layer, and then change the blur radius value to 5. It will make the edges a bit softer. Not bad. Let's create the glass effect now. But we need a map for making the glass effect. So select the logo layer, and then make a duplicate of it. I am calling it a logo map. Then again, right click on it, and choose pre-compose. Let's call it logo map comp. Move all attributes into the new composition, and then hit OK. Now open this composition, and select it. Then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fill. Apply it onto the layer, and then change the fill color to white. Now make a duplicate, then select the bottom one, and change the fill color to black. It has created a very tiny black stroke around the logo. Let me toggle the background transparency, and you can see it. Now select the top layer, again go to the effects and the presets, and search for the simple choker. Apply it onto the layer, and change the choke mat value to 1.3. 
Now create a new adjustment layer, and call it Blur. Again, go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fast box blur. Apply it onto the layer, and change the blur radius value to 10. It will make this layer a bit blurry. The map is done, let's make the glass effect now. Select the reflection layer. Now I want these effects to be placed right inside this pre-comp, so we have to pre-compose this layer once again. Right click on it, and choose pre-compose. Move all attributes into the new composition, and call it reflection comp. And we need to change one thing. Open this composition, and delete this logo comp from here. Now switch back to the main timeline, and then add an alpha mat at this layer once again. Because we want it on the main composition. Now select the reflection comp once again, then go to the effects and the presets, and search for CC glass. Apply it onto the layer, and then adjust a few settings. Open the surface, and change the bump map to the logo map comp, and property to luminance. Now change the displacement value to negative 500, and the height value to 100. And this is how it will look. Let's see how we can make it better. If you go to the top of your composition window, you will find a tab for your composition. So let's select this main composition, and then click here to lock it. Now open logo map comp, and here you will see another composition window. Simply grab it from the top, then place it to the right, and it will attach to this location. Now we have two separate windows for the project. The first one is for the map, and the second one is for the main composition. If we change anything here, you can see the changes in real time. Adjust a few settings, and then you can get a different look. Let's change the blur radius value to 5, so that the edges will look a bit sharper. Close this window, then move to the main composition, and don't forget to unlock this composition. Check the animation, and this is how it looks. Let's add one more effect to it. Select this reflection comp, then again, go to the effects and the presets, and search for the CC blob Elize. Place it right below the CC glass, and change the blob layer to logo map comp. Also, change the cutaway value to zero. And this is how it will look. Let's open the lights in CC glass, and change the lights to AE lights. I am also changing the blob Elize softness to 50. Now select this logo comp, and make a duplicate of it. Place it right below this reflection comp, and then turn on the visibility of it. Now select this reflection composition once again, and change the blend mode to the screen. And this is how the logo will look now. We have added a very beautiful looking reflection to it. Now select this logo comp, and make a duplicate of it. Select the bottom layer, and then apply a fill color on it. If you want, you can change the color of this layer to a different one, such as the gray, or anything else. But I'm going to turn off this fill, because I want to use the original color of the logo. Now we are going to make this logo 3D. Let's see how can we do it. First, select all layers, and then click here to make them 3D. Now select this bottom layer, and then call it Logo Depth. Now open position, then press and hold the Alt, or Option key on your keyboard, and click on this stopwatch icon to add an expression. In this expression box, type square bracket open, position, square bracket open close, and type 0 inside it. Then comma, position, square bracket open close, and type 1 inside it. Then type comma, index, plus 1, square bracket close. Now, this expression will add a 1 pixel position difference in each copy of the layer, and it will create extrusion in our logo. You can see the position is set to 6. If you make a duplicate of it, it will change the value to 7, and so on. 
Now make around 50 copies of this logo layer, to increase the extrude. This is going to take some time in rendering. Right now I cannot see any depth in the logo. So create a new camera, and use the default settings. Hit OK, then go to the tools, and select any of the cursor tools. Rotate the camera, and now you can see the depth in the logo. Now we don't need all these layers to show up all the time, so I'm going to hide them. Select all these copies, and then click here to make them shy. Now activate it from here, and the layer will disappear from the timeline, but don't worry, they all are here in this animation. Let's create a background now. Create a new solid layer, and call it background. Click on this lock aspect ratio, then click on the width, and type star 3 at the end of this width value. It will multiply this value by 3, and increase the dimension of the background. Now place it right below all layers. As you can see, the logo depth is no longer visible. Don't worry, we can fix it. Open position, and we need to make it 3D for fixing this problem. So click here to make it 3D, and then change the last position value to around 60. And this is how it will look. Now, at some point, you can see the corner of the background. In that case, you can increase the background size, or simply adjust the camera angle for getting a different look. I'm going to adjust my camera. So open the camera, then transform. Now add a keyframe on the point of interest, and the position. Then go to around the 3 second position, grab the cursor tool by pressing C on your keyboard, and change the angle to something like this. Go to the first frame, and change the angle to a different one. You can press Shift plus C, to switch to a different cursor tool. Now go to the end keyframe position, select your camera layer, and press Ctrl, or Command Shift D on your keyboard, to split the camera layer. Now we will use this camera layer to create multiple angles. So first, press U to reveal all keyframes, select all keyframes, and delete them. We will add keyframes from the beginning. Now go to the starting position, and change the camera angle to something like this. Now add a keyframe on the point of interest, as well as the position. Then go to the 5 second position, and make it a different angle like this. You're free to use your own camera angle. Now select all keyframes, and press F9 to easy ease them. Let's grab these last, and starting keyframes, and place them like this, so that the animation appears from the beginning. Minimize all layers, and now I'm going to add some colors to the background. Select the background layer, then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the gradient ramp. Apply it onto the layer, and then change the start color to white, and the end color to something like we have in the logo. I'm keeping this blue type of color. Now zoom out a little, and place these anchor points around the edge of your composition. And this is how it looks now. Perfect. Let's create a light now. Make sure to unselect any selected layer, then go to the tools, and select the rectangle shape, tool. My fill is set to the solid, and I am using this blue color for it. Now zoom out a little, and create a rectangle like this. Fit it 100%, then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fast box blur. Place it onto the layer, and then change the blur radius value to 50. Now change the blend mode to the screen, and it will look like this. Let's call this layer light, and now I'm going to add a shadow, so we will use the same technique. Make a duplicate of this shape layer, and change the color to a dark one. Then change the blend mode to multiply. Now open scale, and change the scale value to around 
Then place your shape layer at this position. Let's change the fill color to a different one, something like this dark blue. And also, I'm going to unlink the scale values, and changing the Y scale value to a much lower one. Check the animation, and now we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I will see you in the next one. Till then, good luck, and peace. Design video products faster, with Envato Elements. Get unlimited download After Effects template, stock footage, fonts, music files, and web templates. Visit the Envato Elements. Check the first link in the description.